that today is the 29th. Uh, and if there's anything that you're uncomfortable with, just holler. I can even stop the tape. Um, and I'm speaking with Mr. Al Johnson from Lexington, Georgia. Right. Here at the Oglethorpe Regional Library. Right. And I'm wondering if you could share with us some of your experiences during the World War II era. Well, first thing, that I, I joined the Navy and I wasn't but 16 years old and I was going to win that whole war by myself. <laughs> I found out I did, but it took a couple million other guys to hit me. Uh, no, I was in the Navy and I was in an outfit called the Beach Battalion. I don't know where, don't many people know nothing much about the Beach Battalion. But uh, the Army had to have somebody to get them to the land. And that was us. That's what we did. We had to go in on uh, the beaches. We had to survey for the channels, bring the boat in maybe a day or two before the Army ever got back. We would survey these beaches, we'd make a map, we'd blow up obstacles, and then the day of the invasion, we'd go in and we'd set up markers for the boats to come in to bring the, bring the Army in. And that was basically our job. We made uh, invasion in Africa and in Sicily uh, into uh, Salerno, Anzio, and southern France. And uh, in southern France, they disbanded the Beach Battalion and transferred us over to the Pacific. And we were assigned to ships in the Pacific. Certain groups were assigned to certain ships over in the Pacific. And, uh, I uh, went into uh, Okinawa and into Japan, was in, it, uh, in China and up into Korea uh, when I was into, uh, in the Pacific. And uh, then, of course, I was, uh, I was discharged on uh, January 16, 1946 at Naval Air Station in Johnson, South Carolina. Of course, I wasn't originally from Old Fox County. I was from uh, Newberry County in South Carolina. That's where I was born and raised at all that. Hmm. That's about, about the extent of it. But, uh, where was the Beach Battalion when the war ended? They were still, they were assigned to ships, different ships. Um, I understand, I don't know the fact, but uh, I, we just knew we were going to have to make Normandy um, when we, we were stationed in Naples and waiting for an invasion and we knew we were going to have to make one. And uh, we figured we were going up into northern France, but when they announced that uh, they had the invasion of Normandy, we were still sitting in Naples. And then whammo, they sent us up to uh, southern France and uh, made the invasion and done that up there. Of course, southern France was the easiest one we made. If it was an easy one to be made, it was the easiest one to make. Uh, we didn't have as much opposition in southern France as we did. We were on the beach in Anzio for about 80, 80 to 90 days. I think we were pinned down for 80 to 90 days in Anzio. We stayed right there with the Army. We wore Army uniforms. Nobody knew we were made. We wore Army uniforms. Was there any rivalry between the services, between the Army and the Navy? No, not, not back then. There wasn't. I mean, not while doing combat. Maybe back on the States, yes, but not, not over there. No, everybody tried to work together. We took, um, we worked with the British. We took, uh, we took one uh, division of the British in in Salerno. We worked with the British in Salerno. We took those and took those guys. Back then, as they lost the beach in Salerno, we had to go back up and take it back, and then get them back in there in Salerno. Was that on, was that Montgomery's forces, the British? Uh, no, Montgomery was coming up on the other side. I don't know. I don't know who the commander uh -huh. was. What were some of your first impressions of those sites, those battle sites? Didn't have time to think. <laughs> The first invasion I went in, I, I, I really, I wasn't scared, I wasn't, didn't bother me a bit, it wasn't more than, well, anything hardly. 
But boy, after I found out what it was all about, that second one scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Did you have a lot of artillery cover from the Navy ships before you were going in? Did you have a lot of big guns shooting oh, from yeah, battleships and stuff? Was barrage, yeah. And you were mostly uh, associated with the small landing craft hauling the troops between the ship and the beach. Is that it? Well, yeah, but we were on the beach. We didn't we didn't use the boats to haul them oh. in. We got there. We guided those boats in. I see. Uh, you take if those. Boats didn't have some way set up and hit a barn 400 yards out, in which some of them did anyway. I mean, but you know, somebody had to be there to guide those boats in. To Show them where the deep water was. Yeah, we kind of got in trouble. I don't know how it was. Some of us guys, the army was always bragging about they getting there first and don't be being like this. But anyway, we made us a sign and put up our own little thing facing the ocean up. That the American Boy Scouts got you for <laughs> I believe the name was Kilroy has already been here, wasn't it? Yeah. That was, that name was right. Kilroy, wasn't it? <laughs> now I gave him, I had one of our officers, um, well he wasn't an officer then, but he, after he came in the beach battalion, he went to the Marines and he was a major in the Marines. And he wrote a book on the first beach battalion and I donated it here to the library. They got it here a lot. That's about, well, there's a lot of things that, I mean, that happen. I don't know any guys that they talk about. I tried to forget most everything, a lot of the things that I've seen. And, and my wife tried to get me to talk about them and stuff like that. I'd rather not get it back in your head and get it going. Just don't, it don't be no good, it's over with. Were well, you with a unit of, uh, say, 25 or 50 men or something like that, and you were with them every day? It was 400 of us. 400 of them. 400 Were there some colorful characters in those 400? Well, they all, you get 400 people together, guys, anywhere from 16 to 20 years old, you already got all. <laughs> you got some cut-ups. Was the food pretty good? Was the food pretty good? Food pretty good. Well, you hear what Hubert said. It was the same basic thing with us. We used K rations, C rations, five and one rations, which I noticed that uh, Hubert didn't mention, but the five and ones were pretty good. What was that? Well, it, you could come with a package, five people out of, eat out of one pack, to call it five and one. You had canned peaches and stuff, and a few little stuff. It was a little better than C rations and K rations. When you get a hold of them, and of course you come across a field of onions and tuck that and you use it with your powdered eggs. You could chop up the onions and your powdered eggs and make them taste a little bit better. Did that too much coffee, did you? Man, I'll tell you what, just soon drink I died as I had the coffee. <laughs> Take uh, coffee and you get the water out of one of those lister bags out there in Africa on the desert and had so much chlorine in it and you had this little can of canned heat and you took one of your canteens and you put one of them little coffee things in there and I believe goodness you poured it on you when the hills you know? <laughs> <laughs> it been as good as I <laughs> yeah well they now they call those uh the units like you in, kind of like the SEALs are today, y'all go in the first and demolition of the uh, obstacles like concrete bunkers or concrete chunks in the water or something. Y'all yeah. did all of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we had to do. Yeah. Did you get too close to the enemy? Or were they shooting at you pretty much? Well, I don't know how close you call it, but when you go in there, when you've got a sand dune on the beach, and you're looking over the sand dune like that, and you see a tiger tank and a guy looking at you on the other side, I don't know how close you call that. <laughs> yeah, pretty close. Tiger behind the sand dune, huh? Huh? A tiger tank behind the sand yeah, dune. Yeah, I guarantee you. You're right there with them. Oh, well, it wasn't bad. We didn't have to stay in it too long when we made, you know, when we made the beach. Two, three weeks, month, 
long as we had the state was in the hands of the other home beach. We had the state that the beach was secured and the Army had enough foothold to go. That's it, and then that, that the supplies could be brought in at a port somewhere. Did y'all have to put up any portable uh, sea ports or something? Oh, yeah. As was part of the job. Pontoon, pontoon docks and that kind of stuff. Yeah, indeed. Did they have scuba divers in those days? They had some, but I wasn't. I wasn't in that part of that. Oh God, part of the outfit there, but I didn't, I didn't. When you went into the Navy, did you have an idea of what you would be doing? You no, Lord, no. Oh, they just say so this group is going to be Beach Boys and so on, yeah. and another they group said, is going to carry or something. Well, I first started out there on the LST, and they asked for some volunteers. They said, "Don't want some volunteers. You, you, and you. You know, this is strictly a volunteer outfit. I want you, you, and you." <laughs> you got it now. <laughs> and they took uh, off LST into uh, Camp Bradford, Virginia, Little Creek, Camp Bradford. It was in Fever's training. Sent us straight in on them. Oh, we didn't know what we were getting into. I'm what was the difference in you and the CBs? CBs was a construction battalion. Uh -huh. CBs. See, we came in and constructed like uh, temporary landing strips and uh, temporary housing, temporary this and that. Well, they were just after, just construction battalion. Yeah. Yeah. Tough outfit. We work with CBs a lot. Was the CBs a Navy division or an Army division? Navy. Navy, okay. Yeah, Yeah, after we got, we worked with engineers, Army engineers, 1st Ranger Battalion, 40th Engineer. Can you tell me a little bit about joining up and basic training? Oh, well, it kind of a long story really, but I was, my mother died when I, I mean, my father died when I was seven years old, and my mother died when I was 14. And we had a little farm over in South Carolina, and I stayed over there to yeah, make my own living. I mean, by myself, stay by myself. Until I got old enough, and I said, well, I got to be, can't be much worse than this. So I decided I'd go in the Navy. <laughs> Where did you go to Charleston? No, I went to, uh, I first went to Columbia, South Carolina, and then sent to Norfolk, Virginia. Where were you when the war was over now, and how did you get home? When I went, I, uh, we were headed, uh, we went to Okinawa, we rode out, we were riding out uh, a typhoon in Okinawa on the ship. And, uh, then we went, after that, we went into Tokyo Harbor, Tokyo, Tokyo Bay, when that peace treaty was being signed. I was in that bunch there. And then we had to go up into, uh, we went up to, um, up to Hong Kong and picked up a load of <coughs> Chinese troops and took them up in the North China. They were fighting each other then, you know, started fighting each other like that. Right then we picked up some more, and one of them was there in China, and took them over to Korea. And we'd come back to Hong Kong, and when the ship was coming back into Hong Kong, they had an awful low on the high and low tide down. We came in low tide, and the buoy, <coughs> buoy marker was way out, and the cable was there, and we run over a darn cable. Messed up the shaft on the ship, and we had to come back to Seattle. I suppose they had them got out then. They wouldn't let me out. They didn't have any replacement. And uh, when we came back to Seattle, uh, we stayed there, went in dry dock, and stayed there until I got discharged. Got out January 16th, 46. Did you go back to Newberry then? Well, 
kind of funny. My brother lived in Atlanta, and when I got home, he was there. And I had an old uh, 36 Oldsmobile, I believe it was. It'd been sitting there, and I got that thing to run him, and took him back to Atlanta, and I knew he'd go back. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed there till, uh, till my wife was from Old Fuck County, you know, she's from Old Fuck County. I met her, she was Secretary of Sears. Met her, and we got married. That's how I wound up both on him. What have you been doing since those days? Say what now? What 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 sort of work have you been doing since 1946? Been a grease monkey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I uh, went to work for Ford after I got out for a motor company, and uh, I worked in for about um, well from 46 to 49. And believe it or not, I came to Old Clock County and found out that Bobby's daddy over there had a little garage for rent, and I rented that thing from his daddy. I think Bobby, Bobby, Bobby's daddy, somebody, the first customer I had there, worked in that little shop for. I remember the price of the rent, it was $10 a month. <laughs> yeah. And he took it, took it out in welding. Yeah. <laughs> took out the rent in welding. But anyway, I, uh, I run that shop there for. I don't know, probably a couple of years, and I bought some land down in Highway 2278, built up the salvage yard, and run a garage there. And uh, in 1963, I bought Ford Place in Crawford. I've been there since 1963, been there 31 years. Ford mm -hmm. Place in Crawford. Um, were there were there other Goodbye, Miss Paul. Were there other um, boats or, or other experiences in the Navy that you can tell us about? Well, not a whole heap. I, was, I got wounded in the leg once, and I got and I got a piece of crap and put the hand once. And about, uh, how did those happen? How how did those in how did you come by those injuries? Uh, well, uh, I reckon it's a German. They shot me in Swerno. It must have been a sniper somewhere because he, I was running. I wasn't running. I was passing people who were running on him. But anyway, but then I was on uh, guard duty on an ammunition dump when a, a bone exploded pretty close and the fish shrapnel went off and I come through my hand. How would they treat you for those injuries? Yeah, that's not the one then. I stayed. I, I had more trouble. Of course, I did. It mostly got just a muscle in the leg, and uh, that uh, I thought one was no problem at all. But I got infected. It got infected, and I stayed in the field hospital for quite a while. Get that well, but after that, but, of course, a hand wasn't nothing no more than just mashing for the good with a hammer or something. You know? Do you have any other family aside from your mom and dad? I had uh, I had a brother and uh, three sisters. Mm -hmm. My brother, he was in the Merchant Marine. He was in the Merchant Marine. On your invasions, how many were you in? Huh? Were you in six invasions or five invasions or? Oh, good gracious! I don't really know. Uh, we made uh, we made a lot of mock invasions. You know, what? We get out there and. Uh, make a fake invasion, try to pull the Germans down, make them think we're making an invasion somewhere. And we made it a point to let them know we were there. And then when they started moving their equipment and stuff down, we'd pull out, we'd leave. And then, of course, in fact, the business, we did that before we, uh, when they were, before we made the uh, Anzio invasion, when the, the army was pinned down trying to get into Rome, and we went up the Gaglion River and made a uh, false invasion up there and up the back on the river. That's between Anzio and Naples. And, uh, and uh, it helped some, but I don't think nothing would have helped much as much mud and goop and goop they had about that time. Did you have air support from the Air Force and Navy, a lot of it? Well, we had some, but I think we should have had more. Didn't have enough then? 
Well, no, no. And we should have had more air support. Well, if you were speaking to a new generation of folks about those days in the World War II era, what would you want to leave behind for them? Well, one of the things that I, I would tell them that uh, they need to be more patriotic. They need to quit fighting each other. And, uh, try to get along more with everybody. And uh, I think if everybody would try to understand the other person's problems and other things, we wouldn't have all these conflicts again. Is there anything you'd like to add about this? period or about your time in Oathorp County? Anything you'd like to add to the record here? Well, when I come out of, when I come out of the Navy, I, uh, I said that I was going to try to find me the best place in the world to stay. And when I come to Georgia, I said, well, I found the best state. And when I got to Oathorp County, I said, I found the best county and I'll be here the rest of my life. Did you build a family here? Huh? Did you raise a family here? Yeah, I have. My son, he's running the Ford place now. I got two daughters. May I ask how you met your wife? May I ask how you met your wife? On a blind date. <laughs> you had a daughter in the military also in yeah. Italy. Do you know, why don't you tell them something about that? Well, not really much. She wanted to go in the military. I said, well, go, you know, that's good, good career. Nothing wrong with that. I think military's a good career for people. I tell you what, it'll make a man out of you, or, <laughs> or it'll ruin you one, and it's just what you make of it. I mean, you know. Yeah. Where did she go overseas? Some of the same places you went? Well, she went to some of the same countries, but not. Not in, not in exactly the same place. And she was in France and she was in Italy and she was in Germany and uh, a lot of other places. Of that, but, uh, yeah. I don't like I, I don't think I can tell you about it. I was in the first beach battalion, they had one of the second, the second beach battalion, they did Normandy invasion. And I understand that they didn't make it, they wasn't the first one that made it. Right? And that's why I was just to say, well, I'm glad I was glad that I didn't make them more because I wouldn't have been here. But I understand that none of them broke guys in the second made it, and I don't know how I'm sure it is, but I understand. Not the first one. <coughs> Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. I'm very grateful for your time. Yeah.